What would you do in order to achieve that perfect curve to your derriere? Sagging bottoms aren't attractive and Natalie felt it was time to get hers corrected. Watch as she goes through the process known as a Brazilian butt lift. Today on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps on giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And if the good, I won't even worry anymore. Took all my cares, still can kick them all out the door. Go on and try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show, we'll be talking about buttock enhancements. As we age, gravity can take a toll on our bodies, causing certain areas to sag. A butt lift adds volume back to the top, creating a natural looking curve to, well, the derriere. Let's talk to the doctor who performed Natalie's buttock lift, Dr. Dunkley. Hey, how are you? I'm very well. Good. Okay. Everyone out there is saying, what is a buttocks lift? What is it? It's a combination of procedures. We're, of course, removing fat from places we don't want it and getting it back where we do. So okay, how are you removing them? Liposuction is the way we get the fat. And what is done with that fat once you've removed it? Well, it's collected in a sterile canister. Uh -huh. Then it's loaded into syringes, which we actually centrifuge to get the ruptured fat cells and fluid out of. Then we inject it back into the bottom. So a woman would come in and have a little bit of liposuction around the waist to give her that hourglass shape. Mm -hmm. And then you store it. And then in the same procedure, are you putting it straight into the, the bottom? Yes, absolutely. Same procedure. There is a limited amount of fat we can put in. I can't put a big blob of fat right in the <laughs> middle of the bottom. Okay. Because it would never survive. <laughs> it has to get a blood supply. It's a living substance. So it must be an awful <laughs> amount of fat that you have to transfer. But if someone's wanting a much higher bottom than what they already do, that seems like a lot of fat to put in there. We measure it in cc's and we'll put in 350, 400, 500, even 600 cc's. Wow. Is it a major operation for, for a patient to have done? It is a significant operation. It, we're doing liposuction as well as the fat grafting. And each area that we do liposuction on takes us about an hour, hour and a half. So to do the whole procedure, if we're getting all the fat from one area, is going to be at least an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. Are people doing it because they're getting older or they younger girls are coming in saying, I want this backside? Well, there's a lot of reasons that yeah. they look the way they do. Of course. So age? Age definitely changes the way we look. Uh, genetics, we love our parents, but we don't always love all the things we inherit <laughs> from them. Well, let's just have a look at Natalie's before shots. So just talk us through what, what Natalie was after. So. First of all, we're going to do some contouring in the upper back yes. to get more of that hourglass shape. And then from the side, you'll notice the bottom is a little bit flat, and we're going to give it more curve. So were you injecting at the top of her buttocks rather than around the sides as well? Most of your injection is going to be in the top two-thirds of the bottom. Yeah. Gravity kind of takes care of the bottom half of the bottom. <laughs> For us. So how do you reshape it then if you're just injecting the top when it's a little bit saggy at the bottom? I seem to think in my mind that you would need to pull it up. You are pulling it up. When you add volume to that skin, it's going to lift because you're expanding that area. Not everyone obviously wants to have the surgery side of things. And do you often say that to people out there that they're not the right candidate to have surgery? If you can't have surgery, it's because you don't have enough fat, at least for fat grafting or a Brazilian butt lift. That gives us a great segue into our tip at home. Let's take a quick moment to learn some exercises you can do if you're one of those people that isn't a candidate to have a buttocks lift. The first exercise we're going to do is the hip lift progression. This is a great way to relieve tension in your lower back and work your butt at the same time. Lie on your back with your arms at your sides with your knees bent and your feet on the floor. Lift your hips towards the ceiling. Hold for one count and then lower back down. Repeat the lifts for 60 seconds, squeezing your glutes and hamstrings at the top of the range of motion. Be careful not to overreach your spine. To make this exercise more difficult, extend one leg at the top of the lift. Hold the lifted position for about five seconds. Keep your hips up, place your foot back on the floor and lower your hips. The next exercise I want to show you is a squat with a kickback. This exercise is a great way to turn your quads and butt. Stand with your legs shoulder width apart. Sit back to a squat, bring your fists close to your chin. Now bring your left leg straight behind you while extending your arms forward. 
return to the squat position then repeat on the other side. Continue alternating sides for one minute. As you squat, remember to keep your weight back on your heels and when extending the leg behind you, keep your hips square. Don't twist them towards the side. The last exercise is called a plie. It's a simple no fuss exercise that is easy to do and delivers great results. Stand with your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart and your toes pointing out. Bring your arms out straight in front of you and lower into a squat. Come back up and repeat. Go as low as the squats as you can without letting your knees move past your toes. Now that we've finished our workout, it's time to go shopping for a great pair of jeans to show off that new fabulous toned tush. So we've just seen some ways to exercise at home to lift the butt if need be, but I want to get back to the procedure that Natalie had done. Is it a one-off procedure or will you have to go back and have a top up as such? We often come back and add a little bit more down the road. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that fat's a living substance, so when we move it, it has to reestablish a blood supply. What causes the backside to sag, apart from gravity? We lose volume where we want it. We tend to gain fat where we don't need it. That's part of the aging process. <laughs> we all have it. Like, I'm just thinking to myself, is it just a female thing, or are guys concerned about it nowadays as well? I don't do as much fat grafting on guys, except for in the face. Is there anything that we can do that makes it worse? Diet and exercise, of course. Yes, diet makes a huge difference in just the health, overall health of your body and skin. But uh, certainly smoking and sun exposure are going to be two of the more damaging things for your skin. Really? Smoking yes. for your backside? Smoking for your entire body. It doesn't do anything good <laughs> for Well, I know that, for but I had no idea that smoking would be an issue for your bottom sagging. It's another reason to actually make you give up smoking if you're a smoker. Absolutely. You're also saying sun damage. What's the... Unless you're going to be nude. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> especially ladies. Okay. They can be in a fairly small swimsuit, right. and sun definitely damages the skin, reducing the elasticity and the quality of the skin. What are you telling your patients when they come in to see you? Are there other options for them if they don't want to have the fat transfiguration? There aren't any fillers that we can use at present, which would be Well, that's be a the misconception out there. Well, yes, that's why. A lot of people think you can just go and have some, you know, some filler put in, that the same as that you're having put in your face. And you could, but the fillers come in such small volumes that to add enough to actually get an improvement on the backside, you, it would be very so, expensive. And very expensive very and very a lot expensive. of filler. Yes. But, you know, it's not putty. You right. know, it's not, it's exactly. not like putting a bit of Play-Doh in there. There are also butt implants. That's another procedure that you can have done as well. Correct. What's m safer for you, the butt implant or fat transfiguration? Fat transfer is definitely more safe just Why? because there's less chances of infection, uh, less ah. chances of things that can go wrong. Buttock implants are a great way to go if you have no fat, but there is a lot higher risk of infection. Sometimes those implants can flip upside down. Sometimes the pockets can be wow. uneven and the bottom is a little uneven itself. So there, there are more issues that can occur with implants than with fat grafting. Okay, well, here's some more information on buttock implants. Buttock implants are different from breast implants. Breast implants are more liquid while implants made especially for the buttock area are firmer. Buttock implants are usually placed through an incision in the crease between the cheeks of the bottom. The implants may be placed above or below the gluteus muscle. Risk of infection, asymmetry or scar tissue buildup around the implants are possible. Be sure to ask your doctor about the risks and benefits of this procedure. Coming up after the break, we'll be meeting Natalie and watching as Dr. Dunkley performs the procedure to give Natalie that little bit of a bum lift that she's always wanted. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. I decided to do the Brazilian butt lift mostly because you can only do so much exercise and eating right and there's still some areas that you need help with. I'm thinking we'll do a liposuction on the outer thighs and probably a little bit on the lower back and then you know, we'll spin it down and use the fat loaded in the syringes, put it into the bottom to give you volume where you can use a little bit of volume. We'll just kind of round things out and mainly we want to make sure the you have a nice shape. Afterwards, nice Kardashian or you know Jennifer Lopez, it's like a crazy. <laughs> I have to get back into my clothes, so I'm excited. Sounds good. Okay, should we mark you? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we're gonna get the upper through that one poke right there. 
And we're gonna get the lower area through one poke right here. So we'd like a nice hourglass shade. This area here, we really wanna go after that. Yeah, just go to town. A life without back fat. <laughs> This is where we want the bottom to be, and where we need the most volume is right in here. And that's where we want to fill, is right there. And then we we'll do the same thing over here. Put a couple little dimples here, I'm going to try and release two. Feel yeah. free. I'm going to put one little poke at the bottom here, it'll be in the crease underneath your bottom, so it'll be as inconspicuous as we can possibly make it. That's a nice thing about liposuction, you can do the majority of it through just real teeny marks. Okay, and I think that's it. All right, well, I've read through the recovery, the recovery book, studied it, okay. got my Gatorade ready. You're set. I'm ready for this, I'm excited. My problem area has always been uh, my butt. I don't feel like it's been too big. It's just shapeless to me. I just feel like I need some areas that I really don't feel like I can do myself by exercising or eating a certain way. Um, so it's just kind of something that I researched and I found that this would probably be the best answer for me. A Brazilian butt lift is uh, a little bit misnamed because you don't actually do any cutting. All the lift is obtained from putting in some fat into the upper, upper bottom and getting it a little fuller. So to put fat in means we have to get fat out, which means we'll be doing some liposuction. So right now we're doing our usual tumescence. This has the lidocaine, which is numbing medicine. We're going to tumesce the areas we're going to be sucking fat from as well as the bottom. You can see the areas where I've checkered, hashed. Those are the areas where we're going to be putting in fat. I have some little teeny marks. Those are cellulite dimples in the bottom. Those are fairly easy to remove. And we say we have a love-hate relationship with fat. We hate it in some places, we love it in others. Unfortunately, you don't get to choose exactly where that fat stays. I'm hoping I can fit into my jeans a little bit better, um, look a little bit better in a swimsuit. Hopefully it'll help give me motivation too to keep going to the gym, keep eating right, because it's not something you can just do and it fixes everything. You kind of have to keep up on it and keep yourself healthy and keep exercising. The Vaser is the ultrasound assisted liposuction. So this probe has Vaser or ultrasound rays, I'm sorry, going down the probe. They disperse at the tip. They break the fat bonds loose. You can see that fat's already getting liquefied. It's starting to come out. I'm gonna try and give her a nice teeny waist. I'm really always trying to put all of our poke marks into areas that are very inconspicuous. And so far, this is what I've found works the best. One midline underneath the bra strap up top allows me to get the upper back and then this one at the top of the crease of the hiney virtually invisible. The kind of advice I would give someone that's thinking about doing what I'm doing is um, are, you, are you doing your part? Are you doing what you can? Eating right? Um, exercising? Um, are you researching a good doctor? These little cords we put in are just there to protect the skin edge otherwise the friction from this thing going in and out really injures that skin edge and you get a larger scar. And the whole idea is to be fairly scarless. Okay. He was very particular about this bra bulge. Sometimes I'll bunch the fat up where I really want to get it. And I can really go after that. My husband's quite excited. He wanted to know, he's excited for me to do this procedure. I think because he knows it'll make me happy. Um, I think he loves me the way that I am and is perfectly fine with things, but he asked if he could see some pictures and pick you know, some ideas out of things that he would like, so I'm sure he, he's not having that hard of a time with it. So 
now, after we've put the fat through the centrifuge, we get all the fluid, and then what we're left with is pretty dang pure fat. We need to inject it. We'll inject it in little rows and in deep layers. Usually you just go back and forth, one syringe in each side, so I get the volume I want. I start out superficial and work more deep. I wouldn't suggest someone going into debt or um, spending money they don't have. You know what I mean? Save for it. Make sure that it's the right time for you. We have 240 cc's in each side now, and I'm going to come from underneath, kind of fill that supper area. Now we're going to work a little bit more on the side. At least 50% of this fat most likely will get reabsorbed by the body. Before it's left, can reestablish a blood supply. And we'll do the same over here. We've put 360 cc, six, six of these syringes into each side and I like the shape and the contour we have right now so I'm probably going to call that good and I know some of this is going to go away but this is definitely a good start and if we need a little bit more we freeze the, what we have left and if we need to down the road we can always bring her in here get an IV in put her to sleep for just a couple seconds while we numb this up and then put a little bit more in so now I'm just going to put one stitch in each of these spots to close these incisions up. That's the last one. I'm just going to clean her off, put a steri strip on, and then flip her over. This is a way that I can change something about myself that I haven't been able to before and I'm excited to do it, I'm happy to do it, I'm looking forward to the results, and I'm, you know, pretty positive that I'm gonna be happy with the decision I made. Perfect. Ta-da! You, you can be our big brother. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we'll be hearing from Natalie about her procedure and checking out, well, her final results. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Be sure to check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show. Stay up to date on the Younger You challenge and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Welcome back. Before the break, you had the opportunity to go into the operating room with Dr. Dunkley to watch what is known as the Brazilian butt lift procedure. But now let's talk with Dr. Dunkley and Natalie about the procedure itself. Hey, Natalie, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank all you. Right. I want to ask you, first of all, yes. your age. I am 34. Why did you decide to have a Brazilian butt lift? I wasn't happy. What weren't you happy about? I go to the gym pretty um, regularly. I diet regularly, but I just wasn't seeing the results that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of had a flat, <laughs> wide, A flat, mom. wide backside. It's just always been there. <laughs> you have a smile on your face, Dr. Dunkley. Do you hear that a lot? Yeah, very commonly. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I just don't have the curves I want. It's just not the shape I want. You were saying that you go to the gym a lot. Mm -hmm. And why couldn't you get that shape? I did classes where it was kind of aimed towards getting those results. Yeah. And I think you can do it, and I think it is good for you, but at some point, it just is, it wasn't enough for me. It wasn't me. enough. No. Did you know that you had to have liposuction to actually have the procedure first? Dr. Dunkley explained that to me, and I just thought that was just a great plus. <laughs> it's like, lose a bit here, sure. add it there. <laughs> Take what <And> you need. <laughs> Do you often have that response, exactly what Natalie just said? Oh, absolutely. When I tell them I need a little fat, they usually say, take all you want. <laughs> right. Okay, well, we're going to have a look at your after shot. We've seen the before shots, and now we're going to look at your after shot right That's... now. Let's take a look. What do you see? I see a nice, round, plump derriere. You do? I'm pretty happy. You are? Oh, ecstatic, yeah. What has your husband said? 
Um, he's very pleased. Okay. How does it fill out a pair of jeans now? Much better. I'm uh, always uh, looking for the right pair of jeans and I feel like I don't need to do that anymore. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you to stand up. I want to see how they fill out the jeans. You now. got it. Uh -huh. All right. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Yes. Well, you now got, I do. You, now you do. Yeah. Okay. Well, just turn. Okay. Wow. Turn side on. Dr. Dunkley, were you feeling more of the top part of Natalie's backside? Absolutely. The places we lose the most volume are on the top and on the sides. We tend yeah. to get a square bottom as we age and a nice round bottom actually looks really cute. When people come in and see you, Dr. Dunkley, do they bring in a particular type of shape for the bottom? <laughs> Not usually a shape. It's okay. just usually a picture a showing picture. somebody with a really narrow waist and yeah. a very round bottom. Okay. And round looks best. We want nice round bottom on each side. Was it purely vanity for you? Yes. Okay. I think I, confidence wise, I'm a confident person. I'm fairly happy with my body. And it's, I just figure you live once, you might as well, you know, do what you want to do. Look that, your best. Yeah. Look your best. Mm -hmm. yes. Put your best foot forward, exactly. to, so to speak. How long did Natalie's procedure take, Dr. Dunkley? It took us about three, three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. We took fat from two different areas, took from the inner thighs and from the back, and then put it into her bottom. Is that a common area to take that for women as well, the inner thigh? The most common area is going to be the low back, but everywhere. We'll get fat from the abdomen, from the inner okay. thighs, from the outer thighs. So you're, you're doing two things. You have, not only are you having a butt lift, you're completely reshaping your mm -hmm. body as well. So you're having two procedures basically mm -hmm. done, aren't you? Yes. Did you feel that it was going to be a long recovery? It was going to be about a week to two weeks and mm. that's about what it was. The first week um, you're just mostly really sore. It wasn't bad. I could still do, I could, you know, do normal things. I just kind of had to sleep on my tummy and just be a little bit more careful with my kids. Okay. All in all, it wasn't bad. What's the average time for recovery, Dr. Dunkley? For this procedure, about a week. The first three days are definitely the worst of it. And after that, they start feeling better and better each day. Okay, well, let's just have a quick look at some quick tips that you will need to do for recovery when you decide to have this great Brazilian butt lift. Minimize sitting for two weeks after surgery. Lie down or stand when possible. To prevent blood clots, you must be up walking beginning of the day of your surgery. Walk a minimum of two to three minutes every hour and a half. You can shower the day after surgery if desired. Wash with baby shampoo as it will not sting the incisions. You may resume upper body exercise within two weeks. The skin over the bottom and where liposuction was performed may be numb initially. Normal feeling can take up to six months to return. Dr. Dunkley, I want to ask you because everyone wants to know You've said fat transfication, and it is fat, so it can, does disperse over the body over a period of time. When they have the procedure done, do you do a checkup and maybe need to add a little bit more? Yeah, we'll frequently add a little bit more. We actually will store the extra fat that I can't put in at the time of the surgery. In a big freezer? In a freezer. We can <laughs> Just a normal it. freezer? Yeah, believe it or not, we can thaw it out, re-inject it, I'm it'll still I, live. Well, I was joking. No, that's, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Did you think that was a big, did you see his, you know, well, stakes in there as well? When I saw it, <laughs> this, when we were going in for the revision, I, there was a lot of fat. Who knew? You've gone back in. You've had a checkup. Dr. Dunkley said that you actually had a little bit more put back in. Yes. What was the reason for doing that? Just to get that final touch on the contour. There's so a few places where it's just a little flat and we okay. wanted to round it out. So it's literally like having a filler on your face because you always go back mm -hmm. and have a checkup with you, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very easy. Did you feel that your backside might have been a little bit too big? When you're recovering, you're pretty swollen. Yeah. And so for the first few days, you're kind of looking and wondering what's going on back there. but. Within that next couple weeks, it just goes into this great shape. Like every day you wake up and you're excited to go look. <laughs> it just gets better and better. <gasps> She's pretty confident. <laughs> One of my questions was, has it given you a lot of confidence back? And I'm thinking to myself, I don't think you need it. Or have you got that confidence since you've had a new backside? Oh, I think it's given me a lot more confidence. <laughs> really? I have my husband following me around the house now, just making little comments. I. What's one of the me comments? Happier. Um, he's just really happy. <laughs> Do you, he was always he happy with tip? me before, but now he's, <laughs> he's it's a just a plus we for everybody. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
if Natalie wanted to come back in, say, five years' time, would you need to have the liposuction again to put more fat back in, or how long does the fat in storage for? Usually we'll save the fat four to a maximum of about six months. Right. So you're going to have to have another bit of a transfer if need be. If he wants so to. So eat away. I'm He's, up for it. This is the deal. <laughs> eat whatever you want, okay, knowing it's going to end up on your backside anyway. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Is that what you're telling us? Not exactly. <laughs> I tell everybody, watch your weight. Keep it the same. <laughs> but it, it does give you... Um, more um, reason to go into the gym because you do want to keep it up. It gives you a little bit of a jump start to kind of get in and work on the rest of your body. So are you out there buying more lingerie now? Absolutely. Well, probably your husband's per buying it for you. my husband's request. <laughs> so, yes. request. Now, Lee, I want to thank you because to have your backside yeah. on TV yeah. for the whole of us to see, now looking pretty amazing, I might yeah. add. We want to say thank you for you, thank you for showing me. us that nice little procedure that you had done. Thank you, Dr. Dunkley. We appreciate you showing us how it's all done as well. Thanks for joining us. And remember, I've always said the younger you is about the physical, the emotional and the inspirational well-being. Make sure you are taking care of yourself in all three areas. And if you feel like your bottom is in need of a little lift, perhaps this is the procedure that you need for you. For more information about Dr. Dunkley and about our show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next week, we're talking about colon cancer. Dr. Joshua Redd will be joining me in the studio to talk about your colon health. And then we'll be meeting Brian, a brave man who has a family history of colon cancer and he's offered to have a colonoscopy done by Dr. Maxwell.